Okay, so this afternoon we're going to do a flight in the Airbus A320 to see if Microsoft has corrected any of the issues that exist with it. Um, with the, the basic flight performance really. So I'm going to go to selected airspeed mode, selected heading, selected altitude. Actually, I don't know why I'm playing with this. I'm going to control it manually all the way through the flight. So we're going to select flaps 2 for takeoff. We're going to fly out. We're on runway 22, so 220 degrees, turn left to 40 degrees, fly down the downwind leg, fly back to 220 and land. So before we do that, we need to go into navigation radios and put in 110.5 and 223, I think the actual course of the runway is. Uh, is it giving us an accurate heading anywhere? Going to two five on the heading, but I don't think that's actually true. Anyway, we'll see how we go. So, get the mouse out of the way. Full throttle. Keep it on the speed. The plane is tracking slightly right. I've got um, one of the preset weathers, I've got f uh, a few clouds as the setting for the weather here. Yeah, the trolley track is slightly right, which isn't necessarily correct. So coming through 160 knots, so rotate. It comes up, gear. I'm going to turn the automatic throttle off, so I get to tell, tell it what to do, basically. So gear up, uh, sorry, flaps up completely up. So we'll climb out to about 2,000 feet over and then speed. we'll... Over speed. See later, it's saying over speed and that's ridiculous. We're nowhere near 250 knots or anything like that yet. And if we look, the flaps have finished travelling as Airbus well. Bravo, Echo Kilo, you are leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Acknowledge frequency change. Tower Airbus Gulf. Juliet, Bravo, so coming up to two and a half thousand change. feet. We don't want to go faster than 250 knots, so I'm almost back to zero on the throttle. And now it's showing a rate of change positive while the actual speed is going negative, so that's still broken. So let's give us a fairly tight turn leave it in the turn and see if the nose drops because it shouldn't. Ah, the nose is dropping so that's not correct either. On the Airbus you're not actually controlling the surfaces directly, you're directing the aircraft where you want it to point. So if you lift the nose to five degrees and let go, even if you're going around a corner it should hold it for you and it's not doing that. So we're at 3,000 feet. We've got a slight back pressure on the stick the entire time to stop it from dropping the nose. It's probably easier to do that than to trim it and then re-trim it when we level up. So we're coming around to 40 degrees. it doing in terms of vertical speed and speed. So we're doing 220 knots, fairly stable. We've got no autopilot on or anything like that. And you should be able to see the airfield over there somewhere. It's probably behind the pillar. Oh no, it's just coming. It's down here. So if we zoom in and look at the map display, yeah, we can see the wrong way there. Look. So maybe we'll turn right a little bit to 45 degrees. Up to three and a half thousand feet. What's happening with the speed? 
the 50 degrees. I just want to give us room to turn. We come at the other end, so yeah, we probably want 45, not 50. So we'll just gently turn back to 45. So, so far, so good. But I have been playing with this. Oh, we're still climbing. I should stop that happening. Let's get the nose back down. So when it's on the level, it seems to hold attitude. As you'd expect an Airbus to. Okay. So we'll just gently, very, very gently, slow, slowly drop back down. Um, yeah. When you're flying around at a sensible speed, it seems to react as you would expect an Airbus to. But um, when we get into finals, so I've over the runway apron and running out of speed and falling the plane onto the runway, it tends to get very, very dicey. And I don't think it's accurate at all. So I'm going to descend. Let's get back down to two and a half thousand before we turn. So if I just put the, the nose level with the horizon, because we're only doing... Yeah, we're doing about 230 knots. Traveled Ryanair, 8289er, one zero miles northeast, inbound ILS runway. So the idea here is we'll turn around in a bit. Let's have a look outside, see where we are. The airfield's over there. So let's make our turn. So we're getting a bit low. We're at 2,000 feet above the ground now. So let's start this left turn. Remember we're going to have to hold the nose up because it will fall. While we're going around the corner, we may as well climb a little bit. Get back up to kind of two and a half, three thousand ish. Coming around for 220. Let's. Oops. I hate that that happens. Right, so we're off to. We're off to the right of the ILS, so we're going to correct that. We're above the ILS beam as well. So let's just see if we can recorrect that and get in on normal kind of approach. So flaps one. Flaps two. Gear down. Three. So let's get rid of some of this height. As long as we stay above 140 knots, we should be okay. 
it seems to be there's a massive fault in the flight model. If you get below 140 knots, you pretty much lose all elevator and aileron control. Yeah, it's terrible. It's kind of just floating along without really obeying what you're doing. Yep, ailerons a bit there, massively. And now it's bouncing above the runway, floating on an invisible column of air, which shouldn't be there. It's just nuts, isn't it? Okay, so yeah, it's, it's still got all the problems with the flight model it's had all along, which is a shame, really. the runway and stop on the taxiway and that'll do for the video. So it's, it's kind of controllable but it becomes very very unpredictable during the final approach. Ah, there you go, the A320 in Flight Sim 2020 still as unpredictable as hell. <laughs>